Hi, I'm Mitch Mitchell. Yeah, today I'm telling you my name. So I want to talk today about the importance of niche marketing. Now, I have five blogs and I will admit that I don't niche market on most of them, but a couple of them I do. For instance, I have my main business blog, which is called Mitch's blog. And I speak mainly about leadership and diversity and healthcare finance because these are things I do in business. I, I do speaking engagements. I do consulting. I do executive coaching. So that's exactly what that is because that's my primary business. And then I have a finance blog. And I have a finance blog where every article is about finance. And then I have my medical billing blog. And it's not as niched as the others because I do talk about medical billing but I also talk about a lot of health stuff and so you know it's still health it's medical I guess I could say but it's not as uniquely defined then I have a blog that's called Syracuse Wiki and initially it was niched for Central New York the Syracuse area and all throughout Central New York and then I left town for 18 months and <laughs> I didn't have anything to write about, so I decided to turn it into my pretty much anything I want blog. And then I have my I'm Just Sharing blog, and that's uh, my most popular blog. And it's not necessarily niched. Most of the articles are about blogging and social media, but, you know, I will talk about other things. I talk a lot about writing, and I'll write motivational things here and there, whatever. And every once in a while, I'll just talk about some other thing just because I'm just in the mood to. So I don't consider that niched. But, you know, it's an interesting thing where we talk about this word called niche. And I call it niche. Some people call it niche. I always wonder if they're, you know, they've got a Nietzsche thing going on, you know, with psychology. And then I say, well, wait, how many of those people have actually ever read Nietzsche? Probably not many. So, you know. But anyhow, um, you know, I call it a niche. And I wanted to share a couple of things. This is a local magazine called Women of Upstate New York. There's actually three different magazines in our area that are geared towards women. And every article is a professional businesswoman, or it's about, oh, this is from a woman who wrote it. And then you've got, you know, stories mainly about women. And then we have this one, which is 55 plus. So this is actually supposed to be for people like me. And every article talks about, you know, like this is an older guy talking about his vacation, uh, winter vacation, going to Prague and Vienna and Budapest. I don't know why he'd want to, but there you go. Um, you know, every article is geared towards people my age, which is very strange. Now, these are both free. And those other magazines I told you are free because you have advertising like this. Live independently at home. And you will have stuff talking about, you know, different services that are geared towards people who are older. And I don't see myself necessarily as older because I'm not going to a retirement home and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, estate planning, because it's one of the things you have to start thinking about when you're 55, <clears throat> mainly if you have kids and I don't have any kids. Medicare, I still have some time to go. Anyhow, you have that. And then back to this woman's magazine, um, you have ads that are talking about it. Like this is talking about St. Joseph's Hospital and pregnancies. St. Joseph's is one of the large hospitals in my area. And wedding stuff. And the reason I wanted to kind of highlight this type of thing, you know, yoga and wellness, even though men do yoga and wellness, it's mainly women. And the thing is that, like I said, they're free to us, the consumers, but the advertising is enough so that these magazines, the company that puts these magazines out, does make a profit. How big a profit? I'm not really sure. Um, some of these are owned by the exact same company, so you know they're putting out a bunch of them. They get to list them for free. You know they're not selling it, so every grocery store in the area has it. A lot of drug stores have these things sitting in there. Um, other types of stores. Um, let's see. I think the Dollar Tree. Uh, I think it's called Dollar Tree. I just usually call them all dollar stores. I don't know. But, you know, some of these are there as well. Some of them are at the gas stations. They're all over the place. So you're giving away these free magazines. There are going to be some people who are going to look at these ads. But it's more important that you have the people who are putting the ads in the magazine. So they're paying for it. 
And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about when you get the niche. Now, my business blog is my business blog. So I, there's no advertising on that bad boy whatsoever. However, on my finance blog, right now I don't have advertisers, but I've had advertisers. But what I have is I have people who want to pay me to put an article on the site. So I, they're sponsored posts. And in the, in the title, I say sponsored posts so that there's no question, you know, whether it's being paid for or not, because that's one of the big things that the search engines are saying, you know, and also the FCC. They say, you know, we need to know that that, you know, what this exactly is. So, uh, you know, it says it's a sponsored post because those people want to reach other people who might be looking for financial information. The medical billing site is getting close to being primed for advertisers. It's not quite there yet. I only started it, you know, last year. So, you know, you can make money by looking for a specific niche. There's not going to be tons of people who are going to be looking for the medical billing thing. It's just not going to happen. I write the health articles because maybe they'll see that and then see something else. There are people who are interested in some of the financial stuff because most of the stuff I write is about personal finance. So there may be people who want to learn how to save money or learn how to budget or do whatever. So these other people who come out, they want to write about investing or, you know, saving or doing some of these other things. You know what? It fits the theme of finance. And the local blog, like I said, I, I kind of missed out on that because I was gone for 18 months. But, you know, I was really trying to build that up to a thing where then I could get local ad advertisers on. And I could still get back to that at some point. So that's really the importance of doing a niche, not only because you could get advertisers, but those are the types of visitors you're looking to get if you're looking to sell something. Now, like I said, I don't do it great. I, you know, I, I have gotten business from some of these things here. Like I said, the, the finance blog people pay me to have articles on there, so I'm not mad at that. <laughs> and I've had advertising in the past. I had pretty good advertising before I left town, and then I just didn't have time to you know maintain it all the time. So I haven't really figured out how to get back into that, but I will at some point. So you know that's how you can start to make money. Um, and if you can get a finite niche, and you can get the audience there, it might even be better. I knew someone years ago who had a blog, and she wrote about hydroponic gardening. And if you're not sure what that is, there's these little things that you get, and you grow stuff in it. You can actually grow food in these little things, and you grow it in the house, and you have different lighting and different things you do. And she started writing her blog about that and talking about the different things she was using, and then she hooked up with someone. I'm not really sure. It might have been Amazon or it might have been something else. And at one point, she was making $3,000 a month. Now, like I said, I don't know how many people cared about hydroponic gardening, but the thing is, she was so finitely niched that, you know, those people cared. And they cared so much about it that she was showing success and they wanted to buy the same things that she had. And they would leave these comments on her blog. You know, it's just something to think about. You know, I know there's a lot of people who want to talk about how to make money online. And a lot of the folks are doing the exact same thing. It's something to think about, this niche thing. So that's all I've got for you today. Hope you all are having a great week and a great day. And let's find out what I'm going to talk about next time. You take care.